Please stop. Oh, and when are we getting the X-Men? I cannot tell you that. Okay, back to She-Hulk. Jen, I'm here to help. Hey, Daredevil. You missed it. We're done. Sorry. Everything? Oh, man. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie Tatiana Maslany, who plays She-Hulk in the MCU, just revealed that Marvel has pretty much quietly canceled the series. She goes into a couple of details behind the scenes, what, why she thinks that it got canceled, also part of some of the larger changes that Marvel made last year, too. They completely overhauled the way that they make TV shows just in general from the ground up, like the way they write them, the way they film them. Some of the changes affect the movies, but we'll explain everything. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. Their next big series they're going to have will be X-Men 97. Cannot wait to see some more X-Men stuff happening inside the MCU. Don't worry, we will talk about all the X-Men stuff soon. But if you didn't see the news this past week, Tatiana Maslany was asked recently about the future of the She-Hulk series, and she basically said that it was done at Marvel like it has been cooked. The She-Hulk character will continue like Tatiana Maslany will come back as She-Hulk in the MCU, just not in a season two. Her biggest reason why was apparently they went way over the reported public budget of $225 million. That is a lot of money for a TV show. For example, that's almost double the budget of something like Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. Imagine making something as big as House of the Dragon Season 1 for like half the price that it cost them to make She-Hulk Season 1. And remember, that $225 million was the figure they reported publicly, meaning that they went over that budget spending even more money. So you just have to imagine there's an accountant somewhere at Marvel that just blew his top and Kevin Feige was like, yeah, sorry, we can't spend that kind of money on TV series. No go. No more. You have to imagine that level of money is what they typically spend on their really big theatrical event movies and they have a better system for actually making that money back. Even though this past year that hasn't really been working out for them, even the movies that didn't do that well back in 2021, 2022 still made back most of their money. But the last year, that's kind of changed. The Marvel's movie is a really good example of that. Like, that definitely lost a ton of money. But even with movies like that, they still have a way to eventually, like years later, make the money back on those movies. It just takes them a little bit longer to do that. With TV series like She-Hulk that only lives on Disney Plus and doesn't get sold to other TV networks, they can't do that. So that's basically like $225, $230 million that they just threw away. Typically, when you hear about stuff costing them more than $200 million, you're talking about like Spider-Man movies. When it comes to Marvel TV series, Kevin Feige said initially when they started doing WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, like way back early era Disney Plus, the initial phase four TV shows, they wanted the budget for each of the Marvel Disney Plus shows to be about $150 million. That's the same budget if it's six episodes or nine episodes like WandaVision. If you or your friends have ever complained about why they only do six episodes for some series, like why so few, or why are they only doing nine episodes, why are episodes only 30 minutes long, like why is it so short, it's all because of budget, then just dividing that $150 million amongst six episodes or spreading it across nine episodes. But then apparently you get to stuff like She-Hulk and they wind up spending way, way more than that, which they obviously do not like. They legit made a joke about this phenomenon during the She-Hulk finale when she broke the fourth wall and the fifth wall and like literally climbed out of her show on Disney Plus and began talking directly to the writers and Kevin Feige in real life. He asked her to change her form back to human off screen so that they could save money on the visual effects. Like, no, 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 we don't have money in the budget. Just change off screen and then come back. But you must first transform back to Jennifer. Why? You are very expensive. Oh, sure. But wait until the camera is off you. The visual effects team has moved on to another project. And it sounds like She-Hulk was one of those shows that Marvel greenlit early on to make as many green puns as possible because we're talking about Hulks here. Early on when they only cared about boosting their subscriber numbers for Disney+. Plus. Like this is very early era Disney+, Plus, rolling out as much content as possible, as many shows as possible. You have to imagine Bob Chappick, Bob Iger going to them and just saying, can you give us like 10 new Marvel shows this year? And that's why for a little while, it seemed like everybody and their sister was getting their own Disney plus Marvel show. Like if you ever wondered why they picked certain characters to get their own shows, this was during an early era of Disney plus pre pandemic when all this stuff was getting greenlit and they just needed as many shows as possible. And it just sounds like they were way, way off on their budget estimates for what She-Hulk was going to cost. Like in order to bring the show in on budget, you'd have to have a TV show where they never change into the Hulk, which you give people a whole other reason to get pissed off about. One of the other biggest complaints about the She-Hulk series was the overall questionable CG. Like, it seemed like they needed a lot more time to actually polish that, which would have cost them way more money. Remember, this all goes back to their original problem of trying to get too much stuff out too quickly. 
This led to a lot of quality control issues just in general for all the TV shows and all the movies. Kevin Feige only has so much time in the day and so many movies that he can actually manage, so many TV shows that he can help manage. He wound up having to delegate to a lot of his lieutenants and that just did not work out. You might have heard recently about a bunch of people at Marvel, like a bunch of producers that were working on those shows originally, were actually the movie people and a lot of them have since been fired. Last year, then, Marvel essentially hit the pause button like Kevin Feige was like, okay, let's slow our roll on all this stuff. Give us more time to do quality control. That's why Deadpool 3 is the only traditional MCU movie that's coming out this year. There are a bunch of TV shows coming, but generally their output this year is way less than what they had originally planned on releasing. Like, look at this Marvel Phase 5 schedule. There's a lot of stuff that was going to be released this year that didn't even make it to this schedule, too. So you have to imagine that there was even more stuff that was supposed to come out. All that drama this year with Jonathan Majors getting fired, all of his legal issues, really only affected the plans for Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. It didn't cause the other movies to be delayed. Kang wasn't in most of those other movies or those other TV shows. One of the other issues I think Marvel ran into with the She-Hulk series just in general is that Tatiana Maslany was a fantastic actress if you've seen any of her other stuff. But I think they intended the show to be mostly for your casual fans. And a lot of casual fans had never read a She-Hulk comic book before and didn't know that the character was written so comedically. And they went into it expecting something more like the Incredible Hulk. Like way darker, more traditional Hulk. So when she debuted, they started treating her more like Deadpool with all the fourth wall breaking, making fun of all the tropes in the MCU, even using a lot of shorthand during their initial episodes with the Mark Ruffalo, Bruce Banner Hulk, like see how quickly she learns how to handle all this stuff, whereas it took Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner Hulk many, many movies, many phases to actually get through that stuff. It just didn't land with a lot of the fans the way that I think Marvel hoped it would. And I don't think any of that was Tatiana Maslany's fault. I think it was all just about the material she was given. And then when they do eventually bring the character back in the movies, as long as they do give her some solid material to work with, I think it will turn a lot of people around on the character. But at least right now, there is no season two. Like I said, She-Hulk will come back, future Hulk-related storylines. There's a ton of Hulk story happening in Captain America 4, Brave New World, but I don't think that she's actually going to be in that movie. But there is a lot of Hulk-related stuff happening in the MCU the next couple of years. Thunderbolt Ross is supposed to become Red Hulk during Captain America 4. They're bringing back Liv Tyler's Betty Ross from the Incredible Hulk movie because that is MCU, even though it was Edward Norton playing the character. Mark Ruffalo was actually recast as MCU Bruce Banner Hulk, so he's the same Hulk as Edward Norton's Hulk. Liv Tyler's Betty Ross was his Betty Ross. Even though since Mark Ruffalo debuted in that first Avengers movie, he hasn't spent a lot of time referencing Betty Ross in the subsequent movies up through Avengers Endgame and present day. I haven't seen any news about the Bruce Banner Hulk in Captain America 4, but this gets back to the whole Hulk blood plot line during the She-Hulk series. Like, we don't want somebody out there creating a whole bunch more Hulks. Reportedly, that Scar Son of Hulk teaser at the end of the She-Hulk finale was actually intended to set up the next solo Hulk movie, and Marvel's still working on getting the rights worked out with Universal. Like, their lawyers are still in the middle of this ongoing wrestling match with each other, trying to decide who's going to make the next Hulk movie. But apparently the storyline that they're going with is basically going to pay off everyone's theories. Pretty much everyone in the fandom has the same theory that Marvel will eventually do a World War Hulk movie. Like an Avengers level Hulk movie. It would basically be Bruce Banner's Hulk versus the rest of the MCU. All the heroes and all the villains. Like the maddest you've ever seen the Hulk, the most powerful you've ever seen the Hulk. I do not think that that's going to happen at least for a couple more years. Like there's still a lot of weird legal stuff going on between Universal and Marvel behind the scenes. But if we hear any news about that, of course I'll do videos. Marvel is adapting some of those storylines though from World War Hulk because they have the whole Thunderbolt Ross Red Hulk thing. The Intelligentsia, including the leader, MODOK, those characters actually turn Thunderbolt Ross into Red Hulk after World War Hulk, like as a result of that. And if we don't see She-Hulk in the next couple of years in any of the other lesser movies, I do think she will be back in Avengers 5 and Avengers 6 in some small way. But like I said, one of the reasons for them canceling the She-Hulk series, mostly budget, also becomes a big issue bringing the character back. Anytime you bring them back, you have to spend a ton of money to have her become She-Hulk. That's why you don't see the Bruce Banner Hulk in like every single TV show and every single movie because it costs them so much money. For those of you asking if she's going to come back during Daredevil Born Again, like if they're going to have any more lawyer stuff going on, like when she's not actual She-Hulk, like when she's just walking around in human form, I don't expect that just because she's so comedic in tone. In the way that Charlie Cox talks about being Daredevil on the She-Hulk series, it was meant to be kind of a one-off kind of jokey thing. Like it wasn't meant to set up a bunch of ongoing She-Hulk crossovers that he was going to be having in the future. It was just meant to be that one time. 
But let me know in the comments, if they do bring Tatiana Maslany She-Hulk back, where do you want to see her come back in the MCU? We just got a brand new teaser for The Punisher returning. You can click here to learn all about that and click here to learn about that brand new Black Knight Excalibur TV show that Marvel's working on for Kit Harington's Black Knight. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.